Montgomery Baptist Church. Let's give the Lord a hand clap this morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord again. It is good to see all of the faces that I know are smiling under those masks. I can't see the smiles, but I know they're there because we serve an awesome God. Amen. Even though things every single week seem to get crazier and crazier, we know he's got the whole world in his hands. As we head forth into this service on this first Sunday in October, I want to thank all of you who are here. I want to thank you for joining us online. If you're with us on Facebook or on Instagram this morning, recognize and know that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and we are here despite a pandemic. We are physically distanced, but we are socially and physically and spiritually connected through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we're going to praise him this morning. Let's start with our scripture to open up Psalms 84, verses 10 and 11, where the word of the Lord says, For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Let us pray. Lord, Father God, this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Father God, for bringing us here on this day at this appointed time that we might sing songs of praise and worship, that we might magnify and glorify your name, Father God, that you might speak to us with a word through our pastor, Father God, so that our ears may hear and our hearts may be turned, Father God, whether we are physically present in this room or whether we are able to watch and perceive across the internet waves, Father God, we ask that you would speak to our hearts this morning, that your Holy Spirit would move in this place, Father God, that you would be with those who are watching and listening and that you would be with those who would like to be with us this morning but can't. And through it all, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that you are due. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let all God's people say, amen. 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 Bless him one more time. As I have said on multiple occasions here, uh, we are gathering at Montgomery Baptist Church. We encourage you to come join us as the Lord leads you. We encourage you to join us in person if the Lord leads, and to come join us so we can hear from God right here in this sanctuary, so that we can fellowship with the saints and see the faces and, and do all those things that we miss so much. But even so, we are thankful if you are with us online this morning. I do want to share a couple announcements with you. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to come get together. Uh, we pray as we have now moved into October. It's on some levels kind of hard to believe with all that has gone on this year that it is still yet the first Sunday in October, but the weather is telling us that that is true, <laughs> that's for sure. When it was 41 degrees when I got up this morning, I felt that, uh, and we know that October brings our fall festival, and so uh, we are heading forth undaunted with our fall festival. We'll do it a little differently this year, of course. And so I'd, I'd ask each one of you and those of you that are watching online to put on your calendar our fall festival event. That's going to be on Saturday, October 24th, just over or just under three weeks from right now. Saturday, October 24th, here at the church at 3.30. Uh, as is our custom, uh, we'll be having grilled cheese sandwiches. Uh, somebody somewhere is going to show up with some chili, that's for sure. Uh, and as Pastor has said, that this is a BYOC event, bring your own cider. So uh, please do uh, come and join us in fellowship. Uh, even in spite of the, fan, uh, the pandemic, we need to fellowship together. Amen. Uh, one thing that we do want to ask uh, is that because we've got to do a little bit of planning and, and know who's coming, is that if you're going to come, and we do encourage you all to come. Could you please, please, please RSVP by the 18th of October. So that's two weeks from today, uh, which is just under a week from the actual event itself. We would appreciate that. 
following up that on the next day, on Sunday the 25th after service, we will have an event. Uh, we'll have a drive-up concert, concert by Sean and Friends, his band, at 4 o'clock. Now, that's on the same Saturday. I'm sorry, I missed the date. That's on the same Saturday. So we're doing it all at once with the Fall Festival. It's not at the church. It's right there with the Fall Festival. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it a drive up so that we'll be able to open the doors over here in the back of the church and the music can play right out, uh, right outside and you can pull up in your cars and you can get your food and you can listen to the music and be blessed in the process. So we're excited about that. For those who have been following, Sean's been blessing with some great music online, not being daunt, un, daunted by what's been going on. So we have an opportunity to come together in fellowship. And for those of you that are members of Montgomery Baptist Church, let me just say for me personally and, and on behalf of the church, for those that haven't been able to make it here, we miss you, we love you, we hope to see you, and you are still in our prayers. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, like I said, this has been just a crazy week. I mean, I just want you to take a step back and think about this for a second. We don't talk about politics a lot, but that debate was this week. Feels like it was forever ago because so much has happened in the last five days. And whatever it is that you may feel about, you know, depending on how people want to spin it, about you know, people sometimes getting what they deserve or not, not doing what they're supposed to do and finding out. The, the fact of the matter is, is that we need to be praying for everybody to come through this situation. And the fact of the matter remains that as Christians, what we want to do is take this opportunity to share the love of God. And I want to encourage you this morning to use what you saw this week as a vehicle, as a taking off point, if you will, to have conversations about people because there is a very close analogy to what we saw this week with our spiritual life. There are people who walk around every single day spiritually unprotected, spiritually not wearing a mask, spiritually not doing the things that they are supposed to do and should do. And depending on who you're talking to, they have all sorts of reasons why they're doing that. They might tell you it's a hoax. They might tell you they don't believe in God. They might tell you that all oh, that doesn't apply to me. But the fact of the matter remains from a spiritual perspective, as the same way you've heard people saying, it's not a black, white, old, young, Democratic, Republican thing. It's science and the virus is the virus. Guess what? It's not a black, white, old, young, Republican, Democratic thing. God is God, and the word is the word. And one day, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And it's a, it's a tough thing when you see photographs now of everyone in the White House wearing masks when the horse has left the barn, so to speak. <laughs> it has. And the Bible tells us, it's very clear, that there are people who are going to, at the 11th hour, say and do the same thing from a spiritual perspective. You got to view yourself, and we have to view ourselves, in every sense of the word, as ambassadors of Christ. That's what we are. We need to share the good news and explain to people why it is this is so important. Because it truly is a life or death situation. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. This is our first Sunday. And so uh, after service or towards the close of service here, uh, we will be partaking of the Lord's uh, Supper. And so if you are joining us uh, on uh, the Internet this morning, we ask that uh, you take a moment now or in the next few minutes, if you'd like to participate as well, to get the representation of the body and the blood that you have in your home or wherever you may be. Uh, and we'll come back and we'll do that uh, at the end of service, as is our custom. Uh, when we 
disconnect from the airwaves, as it were. We will also have a time of praise and worship here in the church, as is our custom. So I want to encourage everyone, if you're watching and you're not here, once we disconnect and you are no longer with us here across the airwaves, know that you are with us here in spirit and truth. And so plan to take a few moments and just praise God in the quietness of your voice and the quietness of your home or wherever you may be this morning, because he is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. Pastor's going to be uh, finishing up uh, a sermon section uh, that he is working on. And so the, the scripture for this morning uh, is going to come from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 3. So if you could grab your Bibles, grab your swords, turn on your apps to 1 John 3, 1 and 3. And if you are here with me in the room within the sound of my voice, uh, stand as we prepare to read God's word. If you are online, uh, please join us in a posture of reverence toward God as we read God's word. 1 John 3, 1 and 3, reading from the New King James, reads as follows. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Let the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of God's word. Let all God's people say, Amen. 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 This morning, the words from the pastor's heart read as follows. A lot has changed in our world today. Things that we were once used to are no more. Things that we used to do as a child are no more. Wet is now dry, and dry is now wet. Certainly, we have seen change even in our own lives. There is one change, however, that we should be looking for and living for, and that is to be like Jesus. What a blessing it is to know that one day we will be like him because we will see him face to face. This is the change that we all, <coughs> excuse me, that we all long for, which will be accompanied by being in his presence forevermore. The world is certainly not a good place right now, but just hold on because change is coming and you can believe that. Pastor Isley. Good morning, saints. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen? If you know God is good, has been good, and will be good, say amen again. Amen. amen. Thank you, Deacon, for the opening remarks, and I want to encourage all of you here and in Facebook land and online to take advantage of the events we have coming up. You'll hear more about those in the weeks to come. Uh, we're looking forward to Sean and his band just like giving us some nice music. Uh, just so you know, he asked me, could he do this? He volunteered to do it. It's no charge to us at the church. He just wants to share some good music with his friends. And so we encourage you to be a part of that. We also know that this is Pastor Appreciation Month, and we'll be doing more on that on the last Sunday um, of this month. Uh, but I do want to take a moment. Uh, as you know, we have a second pastor here at the church, Pastor Thomas. I just want to take a moment to let you know those who are here, Pastor Thomas and uh, his wife and our family who are here and all those who are here. I personally, and I know we as a church, thank God for Pastor Thomas and his family. Amen. They have truly been a, a blessing to me personally, um, spiritually, in every way. Just having another uh, man of God to be able to call upon and to uh, help you. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. Amen? Amen. And uh, 
he helps keep me sharp, and I know I try to do the same for him, but I do appreciate that. Uh, now, he is a sharp, you know, like a dresser, as you know. I, I ain't got to that level just yet, you know, but, but I'll be working on that. But, 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 but we do thank God for him and his lovely wife. They have brought a lot to the table. Uh, they have given me a charge in my spirit, uh, and they certainly have been an encouragement to this church. So I just wanted to say that. I know we'll be saying a lot more later, but I thank God for him and his family, along with all of those who are here at this church who have been supporting me and putting up with me for the last 20 plus years. Uh, it's been a good run, and we're not done running just yet. So we thank God for you. Amen? Amen. We're going to conclude our series today, A Change is Coming, Part 2. Uh, this one we're going to focus on the fact that we shall be like him. We shall be like him. Taken from 1 John chapter 3. Before we look into the word of God, let's seek God in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day that you have given your people. This is truly the day that you have made, and yes, we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, a change is coming, Father. We see multiple changes in our world today. So many things have changed over this last week. But, Father, these are not the final changes. These are not the changes that your people ultimately seek after and desire. That change is still yet to come, but it's getting closer. So, Father, we pray that you might bless your servant this day. Speak through your servant. Encourage the people with the word of God this morning. We continue to lift up each other in prayer. We pray for this country. We pray for the president that you might speak to his heart and continue to, to uh, just uh, touch his body and mind, his, his spirit and his soul. And we pray uh, that for all those who have been affected by, by COVID-19, that you might just bring them the healing and the peace that they need. This, again, is your day, Father, and we are told to rejoice. So in spite of the law, in spite of it getting cooler, in spite of uh, we not knowing what's going to happen from one day to the next, we know that you are still in control and that your word tells us this too shall pass. So bless now in Jesus the Christ's name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. First John chapter 3, if you found it, say God is good. Verse 1, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Good beloved, now, somebody say now. now. Are we the sons of God? And if doth not yet appear, what we shall be. But we know, somebody say we know. We know. That when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man, say every man that has this hope in him, purifies himself even as he is pure. Amen to the reading of the word of God. We shall be like him. A change is coming. We know that the season is changing right before our eyes. It's getting a little cooler. Uh, in the morning, you might want that jacket for at least the first couple of hours. You see a little dew on the morning grass, a little dew on your cars, and you might do a little shake when you walk outside without that jacket. And it's a reminder that fall is approaching, fall is here, and that a change is coming because you know after fall comes winter. So we know a change is coming. In this world that we live in today, with all of the confusing signals and all the ups and downs, all the good days and not so good days, we still have to stay focused on that fact that a change is coming and that one day we shall be like him. We see in 1 John chapter 3 what the author tells us, the first thing he tells us that, that should encourage us, that we know a change is coming. There is no love like this. There is no love like the love of God Amen. that he has for his people. There, there, we, we cannot ever love him as much as he loves us. There, there's no love like the love God has for us. What manner of love the Father has bestowed, given upon us that we should be called the sons of God, that we should be honored to be in the family of God, that we should be honored to be his children. That's a godly love that only God himself can give. You know, it's one thing when you adopt a child and bring him into your family, and, and, and you do all you can to love that child as your own. 
But you know deep down, as much as you love that child, you didn't bring that child into the world. We're all sinners saved by grace, amen? amen. But God still loves us. He loved us when we were yet in our sins. He loved us after we became his children and we still sinned. And he loves us knowing what we have on our mind to do later on today if it's not pleasing in the sight. Amen? Amen. Romans 5 and 8. Turn there with me. Romans 5 and 8. To show you how deep and awesome this love that he has for his children is. You should never have a doubt in your mind how much God loves you. And that ultimately it will end with you being like him. Romans 5 and 8. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners and that while we were yet sinners, God demonstrated his love towards his people and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We weren't even born. We, and even after we became a part of this world, we weren't thinking about the Lord. But he was thinking about us. The Bible tells us this, greater love has no man than this, than that a man laid down his life for his friends. We are friends of God. Amen. We like that old song. It's a great song. I am a friend of God. Amen. We are a friend of God because he loves us. Then, and that while we were still in our sins, he sent forth his only begotten son to die for you and I. That's love. That's why we will be changed to be like him one day because he loved us so much. That's a great love. To be called the sons of God. You know, we, a lot of us understand that we will take pride in your name. And we will tell our families, tell our children, don't embarrass the family name. I'm a Nysler. I'm a Davis. I'm a Thomas. I'm a Smith. Don't, whatever you do, don't shame the name. And we hold it with some pride. But at the end of the day, we recognize on this side of heaven, it's just our family name. And truth be told, it's the name that we got from somebody else many, many years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a name. But to be named as a son of God, yeah. to be in his family, yeah. how priceless is that? Yeah. To know that he loved us so much that he gave, yeah. that he gave and calls us sons of God. You are somebody. I am somebody. We are somebody. We are children of the Most High. Amen. And he has forgiven us. And he continues to show us his love. Sometimes, as the old song says, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Sometimes we stumble, don't we? Sometimes we stumble on purpose, if the truth be told. But God loves us anyway. There is no love like this. You should be thanking God every day that you're his child. You should not take it for granted that you are a child of the king, which also means you ought to live like it, and you ought to act like it. You are somebody. Don't let anybody ever tell you you're not going to be anything or you won't amount to anything. Don't nobody tell it to your children, because if they are children of God, they are already somebody. They're already royalty. It's, the, it's just a matter of what else God wants to bring into their life. But they are already somebody. You and I are somebody. But we've got to recognize the world doesn't recognize us. They don't know us because they didn't recognize him. Turn to John chapter 15, the Gospel of John. See, sometimes we get in our feelings when people don't recognize us. And sometimes we have little sayings like, they better recognize you better recognize who that is. Sometimes they don't recognize you. Sometimes they don't recognize me. And you worked hard to get to where you are. <laughs> but it don't make some people no difference. Well, look at John, the Gospel of John, chapter 15. Let's pick it up in verse 18. Jesus is talking here. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. So just, you know, if they don't love you, they didn't love me either before they didn't love you. If he were of the world, the world would love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you, and we see that in John 17, I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not, somebody say not, not. 
greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sins, they will keep yours also. Folks, if they didn't love Jesus and didn't want to give him his due, don't be surprised that the world doesn't know you. But rather rejoice in the fact that God knows you. And he calls you by name. See, I was raised in an era, and I'm sure you were raised the same way, where I didn't really get upset if somebody called me out my name because I knew they weren't talking to me because that wasn't my name. Happens to me a lot at the institution. People don't know who I am. They call me something else. I'm, I'm, I'm just steady walking. You're not talking to me. That's not who I am. See, we're somebody. Because of God's favor, because of God's grace, because of God's mercy, because of God's love. That's why we should be looking forward to the change that's coming one day. Because we are somebody. The world didn't know him, didn't want to recognize him. They're not going to want to recognize you and I. We need to stop getting into our feelings when people don't recognize who we are. Because I'm going to tell you right now, when it's all said and done, the one person that you need to recognize you is God himself. <laughs> That's who you need to recognize you, is God himself. And he will recognize you because you're his son, his child. What father doesn't recognize his children? I don't care how old they get. I don't care what they go through in life. A father will always recognize his children. You will always know who's in your family. God knows who's in his family. Now, we, we got to do some things, of course. We can't, in essence, I heard this and I modified it for what I'm about to say. But see, we got to recognize that we can't give God the middle finger in this life. And didn't expect a big hug from God when we see him. Okay. You, you kind of got that? You got to, you, you got to, if you're his child, act like it. Okay. I don't know how many times we would hear, I was raised in the family of nine other brothers and sisters. How many times it was driven into us, you better listen to your father. That's your daddy. That's the one who is helping you get through this life. Well, who do you think is helping us get through this life? You realize if we didn't have God the Father right now as our Father, we'd have lost our mind and all this nonsense a long time ago? And I mean we'd have lost it. I don't mean it would have left us and came back. I mean we'd have lost it. Okay? They ain't got medication for that yet. Okay? <laughs> we'd have lost it. But we know who our Father is, and in spite of all that's going on, he still loves us, and he still cares for us. Verse 2 in 1 John 3. Beloved, now, now. Somebody say now again. Now. See, this isn't just in the future, but right now we are the sons of God. Right now. We are his children. Again, we can't emphasize that enough. Right now you are somebody. You are a royal priesthood. Your father is king. And if your father is king, you got some authority. You got some rights. You know, all the talk about the world, you, you know, like a family and who they marry and their children. One thing I think we all understand, that the princess and the royal family, they probably won't have to be on the corner anytime soon asking for handouts. Because everybody knows who their father is. And because of that connection comes privilege. Because of our connection to our Heavenly Father comes privilege. So you need to start acting as of right now. Not just when you get to heaven, but right now. You are a son of the Most High. You are a son of the King. You are a son of God right now. So live like that. You are somebody. I tell people, parents all the time, never let your kids, when you hear them say, um, I, I'm nobody and I can't make it, you, you, you rebuke that right away. 
because they are somebody. Yeah, the struggle was real. Yeah, they will go through struggles, but they still are somebody. And as long as you are alive and their mother and their father, you will do all you can to help them to make it. Why? Because they're your sons. They're our sons and daughters. And we all know, just like God does with us, some children we got to drag a little harder, a little longer. Some of them we got to push a little more, don't we? Some we could say, when I come home, make sure that's done. And before we out the driveway, it's done. Some, when as soon as the car was in the driveway, we hear them scrambling. <laughs> trying to get it done for you get in the house. But we got to work with that, don't we? Guess what? God works with us every day. But we're still his children. Now are we the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. John 1, 12, Gospel of John. Just to remind us. Gospel of John is a great book to read for encouragement and just to know how much God loves you through his son, Jesus Christ. But John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many, say many, many. as many as received him, to them, to them that received him, gave he power, say power, power. to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. To as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to those that believe on his name. Thank God that we are sons and daughters. And because we have received him, we also receive that power. We can, when Paul said, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength, he means it. When he says that, that if we call upon him and he will answer us and show us great and mighty things that we don't even know about, he means it. When he says, ask in faith, nothing wavering, he means it. What we need to do now more than ever as children of God is start taking God at his word. I don't mean coming up with another translation. I don't mean breaking it down in five languages. I mean taking God at his word. When he says, I will never leave you for, or forsake you, you ain't got to break that down five times. Amen. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to be there. Yes. What parent is not going to always do their best to be there for their child? Well, God goes beyond doing his best. He's just going to be there. Sometimes we on the road. I can remember many times when I was in high school playing sports and, of course, dad would try to get to the games, but, but, but when you're working a couple of jobs, you couldn't always get there. And, and as a player, it wasn't just me, but other players, we would be looking to the stand to see if, if Pops is sitting up there watching us. You ain't even starting. You only getting them for three plays, but you want Pops to see you. Well, guess what? Our father sees us, and he's going to get there because he's always there. Because we are sons. See, sometimes we know life happens. And we can't get back. But thank God our Heavenly Father is always there. We are now the sons of God. And if doth not yet appear what we shall be. See, there's a lot of questions about what we're going to be like. Are we going to be just like Christ? Or are we going to keep these forms or have a spiritual form? But what does the author say? But we know this. We know that when he shall appear... We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. A change is coming. I don't understand it all, but I will take his word when he says, we shall be like him. Amen. That's all I need to know. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, absent from the body, present with the Lord. I will be in his presence. I will be like him. A change is coming. Well, are we going to be tall or short? Are we going to recognize each other or not? Because we always say we want to see loved ones, but are they going to really be there for us to see? Or are we going to know who they are? We're going to be like him. Amen. We're going to be like him. And all of this stuff that we got going on in this world that nobody could have foreseen all this stuff coming in 2020. Sometimes as sons of God, as his family, we just got to sit back, sit down, and say, you know what, Lord? Just continue to give me grace, continue to give me favor, because I know a change is coming. Amen. And one day I'm going to be in your presence. 
and I'm going to be like you because I'm going to see you just like you are in all of your glory. That's something to look forward to, saints. It's not the election day that's going to be the big change. That would be a change for this side of heaven. But the greatest change that we all should be looking forward to is when we be like Jesus and see him face to face. That's the change we want. Job 19. I love this text. If, if, if this ain't a shouting text, I don't know what it is. We know the story of Job and how he was tested. And Lord knows we know what it's like to be tested, don't we? As individuals, as a people, we know what it's like to be tested. And, 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 and sometimes it gets frustrating. And sometimes you just want to say what, what John said, even so, come Lord Jesus, just, just come on. I'm ready. Enough of the suffering. I'm, I'm, my heart is right. I'm ready to see my Lord and Savior face to face. Job got to the point where he says, you know what? I don't really understand it all, but this is what I know. Look at verse 25. For I know that my redeemed liveth. My redeemer liveth. Do you know that God is alive, that Jesus is alive? Do you really know that? And that he shall stand at the latter day upon earth. He's going to come back and take control. And he's going to be standing as king. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh. Somebody says my flesh. My flesh. My flesh I shall see God. Whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes behold and not another. Though my reins, my emotions be consumed within me. We got all kinds of emotions right now, don't we? And if we're not careful, they would destroy us. But Job understood this. All my friends who are giving me all this advice and ain't making it no better, you know what? One day God's coming back to control this earth. One day, even though we're putting the ground and we got a sealed vault and we spend $10,000 so nothing can't get in, I ain't worried about nothing getting in. Saints. I want to make sure I get out when Jesus comes. That's what I want. He says, look. One day this flesh is going to decay. One day it's going to just go back to the dust. But you know what? One day my flesh, my eyes shall behold him. Not yours, not my grandmother's. You got to have Jesus for yourself. I'm going to behold him face to face. Because he's coming back for me. And taking me away from all this. Even though things look so out of control right now, God is still in control. And as that old great song says, we shall behold him. We shall behold him. And we will see him for ourselves. Even though these bodies will, will go through changes. We, we try to take care of our bodies, don't we? We all know what we've been through with our bodies. I know what I've been through with my bodies. I've been doing my best to try to take care of this body better. Yes, it's getting better. Yes, there are improvements, but I understand it's the process, and i got to keep going and keep working on it. We all understand that. But one day, these bodies are going to have enough. They're just going to have enough. Think about all the stuff that we've put into our bodies over the years, whether it be even on purpose or just non on purpose. We, we've done some stuff to the bodies, haven't we? <laughs> Think about it. And one day when God calls us to be with him, these bodies are going to have to lay themselves down. But then our eyes shall see him face to face, because the Bible says when he comes with the sound of the trumpet and the trinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. And praise God, we're going to see our Lord and Savior with our own eyes. And it won't just be spiritual eyes, there'll be physical eyes. We will see Jesus face to face. We know this. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us 
that we should be called the sons of God. You can't even begin to describe that love. It's amazing. It's an amazing love. It's an amazing concept to understand and take in that we're going to be like him one day. That we're going to be changed. No more doctors, no more stress headaches, no more surgeries. We remember our former member who moved to Carolina, Dr. Brock. I remember one thing he told me that I really didn't grasp, but I, I, what he told me I, again and again, it finally sank into me. He said, Pastor, just, just so you know, I tell you this as a doctor, because I know you're going to get ready to have some surgery. And it could all go well, and certainly it should and will all go well. But one thing as a doctor that doctors don't tell you, the human body wasn't designed to be cut into. Whether it's a small incision or more of a major operation. The way God designed his bodies were covered with skin for a reason to, to, to keep things on the inside. And he says, it's not a matter of you can't recover, but no matter what you're told, once they break that seal, that seal is broken. And yeah, they sew it back up. I'm a witness to that. They, they, they sew it closed. They staple it shut in some cases. But it will never be the same. Doesn't mean you won't get better. Doesn't mean you won't be able to function. But your body is going to always remember, you were inside of me. And we're supposed to be. So we, we go through that sometimes. And sometimes we limp a little bit. Sometimes we have a little pain, a little headache. And sometimes we just get tired of the bodies that we have. Too much work. Takes a lot of work. What you can eat, what you can't eat. A lot of work. But you know what? It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Because one day we will be changed to be like him. So that is why we should have hope. That is why in verse 3 of 1 John 3 it says, every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as our Lord is pure. You should have hope. Hope maketh not ashamed. Do you have hope this morning that you're going to see our Lord face to face? Do you have hope this morning that absent from the body is present with the Lord. Do you have hope this morning that your eyes and your eyes will see God for yourself? Do you have hope this morning that one day the Lord is coming back at the sound of the trumpet and the trinkling of an eye and the dead in Christ shall be raised first and those who are alive and remain shall be caught up, raptured together to meet the Lord in the air. Do you have hope this morning that a change is coming? Do you have hope that what God says, God definitely means? One more scripture I want to share with you this morning. Go to the book, um, of like a Proverbs. And we're going to focus on the second half of that verse, but we certainly will look at the whole verse. Proverbs chapter 14, if you find it, say praise the Lord. And look at verse 32 with me. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. Awful statement there. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. But look at the second part of verse 32. But the righteous, somebody say the righteous, the righteous. has hope in his death. The righteous has hope in his death. The righteous have hope in his death. What is that hope? That we shall be changed. What is that hope? That we're going to live forevermore with the Lord. What is that hope? That we're going to reign forever and ever with him. What is that hope? That our eyes shall see him face to face. What is that hope? That we're going to praise his name. 
But it's that hope that we're going to see those who have gone before in whatever form God has them. Our hope is that we will spend eternity with the Lord. And as the author says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That is our hope. The righteous, those who are sons of God, have hope in their death. It's not the end, but it's just a new beginning. We have hope. Do you have hope this morning that you really will be changed? Not because you are special, but because you are a son of the Most High God. Because God saves you. Because God changed you. Because God is keeping you. Because God has forgiven you. You have hope. It's not just about the election. Man's going to do what we should know by now. Man's going to do what man's going to do. Man's going to do what man's going to do. But our hope still should be in the Lord. And one day, just when you think it's not going to happen, we shall be changed. And we shall be like him. I don't know about you. I know we're going to have the Lord's table in uh, just a few minutes. But as we close this part of the service, you need to believe and receive the fact that we shall indeed be changed. The question may be, as you stand to your feet and the music begins to play in the background, the question is, are you ready for your change? Because ready or not, a change is coming. Ready or not, when God tells the son who is seated at the right hand of the father, it's time to go get my children, he's coming. There will be no delays. There will be no after boarding, after the door is shut. We shall be changed. We shall be changed. And I don't know about you, but I'm waiting for that change. I'm believing God for that change. I'm trusting God for that change. I'm looking forward to that day. When, as Paul said for himself, that there will await for him a crown of righteousness. What the Lord doesn't just have for him, but all those who love his appearing. See, you have to love his appearing. You have to look forward to it. You shouldn't be ashamed of it. You shouldn't be trying to hide when he comes because you're looking forward to his appearing. Be encouraged. Be encouraged, because a change is coming. With every head bowed, as the music, you could turn it up, Eva. Ask the Lord right now, if you're not ready, in Facebook land and even here in my presence in God's presence in both places ask God to search you and know your heart so that you can make sure that you're ready for the change that is coming ask God to help you be a testimony and a witness to your family and to your co-workers and to your friends so that you can let them know to get ready, get ready, get ready. Because a change is coming. And we indeed shall be like him. I would let those much smarter than I debate about exactly what it will look like. I just know I'm being in his presence. And I'm going to be with him. I shall see his face. Are you ready to see his face? Are you looking forward to the change when you really, in your own flesh, in your own eyes, will see his face? Are you ready for that change this morning? To see God, to see your Savior, Jesus, face to face. This isn't a fairy tale story. This isn't a feel-good story. This is the word of God. 
This is the truth. This will happen. One day, all of this suffering, physically, emotionally, that we're going through, any type we're going through, it's going to be over. And as Job said, I shall see my God. My eyes shall see him face to face. And then I could say I made it over. I could put on my heavenly crown. I could rejoice and praise God because I made it over. I made it over. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm encouraged in spite of all the chaos in our world today. I'm encouraged that a change is coming. Are you encouraged that a change is coming? Are you encouraged that you're going to be part of that change? A change is coming. Looking forward to that. There's no love like his. We're going to see him for ourselves. And no matter how hopeless things seem, we have hope. Be ready, saints. Be ready, because one day he is coming back to take those home to be with him. Be ready for the change. May God bless you. May God encourage you this day. Deacon David. Give the Lord some praise. Come on now. I know the church is not full, but we can praise him better than that. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord this morning. You may be seated as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. Powerful word from the Lord this morning. I was I was thinking and reminded as as pastor was preaching and as as we heard that song being played there at the end the first line I will wear a crown I was thinking about a a story that was in the news this week that I I think is worth sharing Uh, it's just a reminder positionally of who we are and how we relate to God some of you may have seen this but I want to tell you the story of a woman named Delphine Bowl it's a Belgian woman who was about 52 years old. And uh, we know that things happen in the real world. In fact, after service, uh, Sunday before last, I was, was chatting with uh, Pastor Thomas, and I said, you know, if, if the Bible actually was a movie, it would probably be rated R just because of all the stuff in the Bible. We know real things happen. And this woman, Delphine Bowl, was actually um, born effectively out of, out of wedlock. The king of... Belgium in the 60s uh, had an extramarital affair, uh, King Leopold, and, uh, and out of that affair came a child. And uh, f- she is now in her early 50s, and for the last 20 years in Belgium, she has been pursuing a lawsuit for the right to be called a princess. Wasn't seeking any money. Wasn't seeking a seat at the table in the castle. Didn't want any of that other stuff that came along with it. She just wanted the right to be called a princess. Because however she had gotten there, her father was the king. And the court, the highest court in Belgium, after two decades of of legal battles, ruled this week that she had the right to call herself Uh, a princess and in part some of that came from a ruling a couple years ago where there was actually a DNA test to prove that she was who she said she was and that just resonated with me from a spiritual context because one of the things the devil does and and so many times people can get caught up in stumbling on the circumstances that led them to get to where they are Whatever the circumstances are that led you to where you are, the fact of the matter remains that you still have royal DNA in your blood 
through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ Jesus. You have the right to be called a prince and a princess of God. And you have that inside of you. Jesus Christ died for each and every one of us. And as we heard today and as we know, one day we will be there with him. No one and nothing can take that from you. And that's something that you ought to be thanking the Lord and praising him for this morning. We can leave this place knowing that we are friends of God and we are God's children. Amen. 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 As I said, we are on the first Sunday of the month, so as is our custom, we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper, and so we're going to prepare here to do that. If you are at home now, I'll give you just a, a minute or two to gather together uh, the body and the blood as you will represent them. Minister Mark. As I have said before, for those of us that know uh, the Lord as our personal Savior, what we are about to do is, is a welcome event, but uh, it is at the same time a solemn one because God's word is very clear that we are to come to the table of the Lord and to do this with a clean heart. The Lord already knows who we are. He knows all of our shortcomings. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And we need to just confess that to him up front. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at about verse 26, says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And therefore, whoever eats of this bread or drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. And so a man... And a woman ought to examine themselves and let them eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For whoever eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So now whether you are here in the room or you are observing on Facebook, if you would just bow your head and close your eyes and take a moment to confess to the Lord that which he knows anyway. Father God, we are imperfect beings that have fallen short of your glory, but we have had perfection imputed to us because you are perfect. Because some 2,000 plus years ago, Father God, you saw fit to be hoisted up on a cross to have insults hurled at you, to be whipped and beaten, to be spat upon, knowing that at any moment you could make it all end. But if you had done that, then we wouldn't have been reconciled to God through your perfect sacrifice. And so on this morning, on this day, Father God, we come and acknowledge you and acknowledge your awesome sacrifice that you made for us, which we did not deserve, which is why it was nothing but an amazing grace, awesome mercy, incredible love. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Let all God's people say, amen. Our God is an awesome God. Our 
God is an awesome God. He reigns with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. for you. He died for me. He reigns with wisdom, power, and love. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me, so let us eat. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So let us drink. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you, Father, for that sacrifice you made. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity, Father, to praise your name, to remember what you did for us, to recall, Lord, all of the things that we have set before us because of your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for bringing us through day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, second by second, Lord. We thank you for girding our feet and for preparing us, even in these trying times, Lord. And ask that you would continue to have the angels to encamp around us and to protect us. That you would reveal yourself to us in a mighty way every single day, Father God. And allow us to remember that the banner over us is love. We ask, Father God, that you would bless those right now who are suffering with COVID. That you would bless those right now who don't know you, reveal yourself to them today, Lord, and use us as a vehicle. Because we know, Father God, that we were bought with a price, and we stand here and are willing to serve. These and all blessings we ask in Christ's name. Let all God's people say, amen. 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 Bless the Lord. You may stand. I know it was the blood. It was the blood, and I know it was the blood, and I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. One more time, I know it was the blood. It is October. It is the 10th month of the year. Do we have 
October birthdays in our midst. Eva with the double wave. Jeff in the back. We got our sister here. God bless you. We got Kendall who is not here now. Let's sing happy birthday to our sister Suzette, to Jeff, to Kendall, to Eva, and to those who are online who we can't hear from right now. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear saints, happy birthday to you and many more. Amen. Amen. It was, uh, it was a blessed time, it was a blessed service, but... As the old TV infomercials used to say, but wait, that's not all. We still got praise and worship time. We still got some testimony time here in the service. So I'm going to ask Pastor Thomas if he would come up and dismiss us. And for those of you that are watching on Facebook and on Instagram, be blessed to be encouraged this week and take a few moments to praise the Lord after we disconnect. Pastor Thomas. Lord, say amen. 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 <laughs> amen. Always say God is good, and all the time God is good. Amen. amen. I'm encouraged by the series that we have uh, heard over the last previous weeks. And I just want to close out because when the pastor talks about a change will come, we know that after this life is over, a change will come because we will be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. But right now, I just want to talk to you just for about two minutes and just let you know, no matter what you're going through in life, God still has the ability and the power to change your situation. Amen. It is according to your faith. I'll give you a testimony. When I first started pastoring in St. Louis, <coughs> the Lord called me to pastor a church that had about seven members. And many times I was discouraged because I sat in the pulpit after one Sunday and I said, I'm preaching to seven people. And I said, is this what you called me to do, Lord? Because you know how we are early in our ministry. We want more. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, you preach to the seven like you preaching to 30,000. And I will do the increase. And when I, the Lord spoke to me and told me that I had to humble myself, and then after I did that, not only did the Lord bless the church, but we moved from a storefront church to a building, a church building. And by the time that I left the church, we had had over uh, about 100, almost 200 members, going from seven to 200 on my faith in God because he can change things. And then later on in my life, a few years later, our job went through reorganization. And I was tapped and told I was no longer going to be a part of the company, but what I didn't see in that is that God was getting ready to open up more doors in my life, and he wanted to take me to a different place. And I remember my wife being a homemaker, and the girls were one and three, I think, at the time. My wife said to me, she said, would you like for me to find a job? And I said, no. God is getting ready to do something, and we just don't know what it is. And we moved, and I was struggling with leaving the church as a pastor after being there for four years. And when we moved to Minnesota, God again opened doors, and my career began to take off. I say that because I look at all of the things that we have gone through in this life, in this year, God is still in control. The, the doctor have told some of you that you're sick. Jobs have been closed, and we see what's going on in the economy. But God is no shorter than his word. And through our disappointment, the word says in Psalms 37 and 1, fret not thyself of evil doers because they'll soon be cast away. Neither be envious of the workers of iniquity. So while we see what's happened this week, we don't have to say anything. We just say, God, do your work because a change will come if we believe and trust in him. All of us have to have a scripture that gives us the strength to get through. 
And every time that I get down, every time that I get disappointed, every time that I don't know how I'm going to make it, I remember Psalms 121. I shall lift my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help, because all of my help comes from the Lord. Right now, right where you stand, whatever it is, whatever disappointment, whatever misunderstanding, get it on your heart and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come again. We say thank you, Lord. We praise you. We magnify you, Lord, because we know that you're able. Father God, we know that you have all power. Father God, we know that you sit high and look low. Father God, you are a doctor. You are the lawyer. You are the company keeper. You're the counselor. You're the mother, Father. You're the father. You're the sister. You're the brother. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done. And Lord, where are so many are celebrating, some confused by the events of this week. We ask, Lord, right now, if you would not only heal our president, but touch his heart, touch his mind, Lord. We need you. Lord, we cannot make it without you. Look upon our first lady. Give her the strength. Father God, you know all about it. Give our pastor the continued strength that he will be able to lead thy people. Lord, as we make ready to close out another one of your divine services, look upon those that are present under the sound of my weak voice. Look oppose upon those that are through Facebook. Lord, we ask that you would touch right now. Heal in the name of Jesus. Now may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit let it rest, let it rule, and let us abide with our people henceforth now and forevermore. And every heart shall say amen.